Now this chapter, we talk about part two of incomplete records and it's called the analysis of records method. This is the second method of this chapter. Now really like what this jigsaw puzzle here is portraying, this particular method would require piecing information, bits and bits of information together to form the complete puzzle. If you recall from part one, I introduced the character Boaz Bomani. Now for Boaz, he did not have his records burned or destroyed. So maybe some records would have been kept. Like for instance, your cash book, where he will record his receipts, money coming in, and payments, money going out. He would probably have a debtor's book because he needs to know how many people are owing him and how much. Also, he might have a creditor's book. He needs to know who he's owing to and how much. Probably, he would also have other records like your sundry debtors and creditors. An example of, examples of these would be like, uh, does he owe any utility company money? Does he owe insurance company money? Or do people owe him rental income money? Now, for debtor's book, you will be able to find this thing called credit sales. I will refresh your memory in just a bit. And for creditor's book, you'll be able to find information like the credit purchases. With these information at hand, we can prepare a very brief trading profit and loss account. With even more information, like for instance, your assets liabilities, your drawings, additional capital, if any, you can even go on to prepare the balance sheet or your statement of affairs. I will want you to keep two objectives in mind, just like the capital comparison method. The first objective is to determine net profit. And the second objective is to ascertain the financial position of the business, which is the preparation of your balance sheet. So remember these two objectives in mind as we go along this chapter. So now I would like to show you the first record that we would like to analyze, and that's the cash book. And we only want to show the bank columns only. So here we go. There is an example here. Okay. Um, if you recall, on the debit side, we have the receipts, money coming in. And on the credit side, we have the payments, money going out. So I am going to ask you, what does this mean? Okay. So money is coming in for this particular entry called sales. Okay, money is coming in $6,000. So what can this be? Now, we would know that total sales is equal to cash sales, sales that uh, we immediately collect money from, okay, plus your credit sales, uh, sales that we have made but we have not yet collected money. So, total sales is made up of cash sales plus credit sales. Now, in this case, this particular entry must be cash sales, okay, because we have collected the money. Money is coming in, okay. By the same reasoning for purchases here, okay, you should be able to understand that this is your cash purchases. So because I have already made payment and it is for purchases, so it is cash purchases. How about this figure here? Okay, this entry says debtors and money is coming in. So if debtors, money coming in, so it has to be that the debtors paid you money, all right? So this is money collected from the debtors. I hope this is clear. And again, by the same reasoning, we would be able to talk about creditors. What does this mean? Okay, so creditors, there is a payment. So obviously, it is money paid to creditors. The second account that we want to analyze is the debtor's control account. This account usually requires you to find credit sales given all other information to do with debtors. So this is an example and this is what we usually need to find, your credit sales. Now earlier I said total sales is equals to cash sales plus credit sales. So 
earlier the earlier slide we found cash sales and this slide we find the credit sales put them together we have what we call total sales and this total sales will be the sales figure that you put into your trading account the third account that we want to analyze is the creditors control account now this account requires you to find the credit purchases given all other information to do with debt uh, creditors just as with that this control account so this is an example and the one highlighted in blue your credit purchases is what we really want to find so just like the total sales total purchases is made out of cash purchases which we found in uh, two slides ago and credit purchases is what we have here put them together we have total purchases and this total purchases uh, same thing it will go into your trading account okay as your purchases okay the fourth type of account that we want to analyze will be the expenses account now this is to determine the expenses for the year so here is an example I understand that prepayments and accruals are not really easy so I'll take it a little bit slower so this is an insurance expense account to debit is to plus to credit is to minus as with all expenses accounts so if you look at this 250 dollars balance brought down this shows prepayment prepayment from last year because why i paid uh, too much uh, last year and it will continue or i will continue to benefit from it this year okay next we paid 850 dollars this year for insurance and we realized that at the end of the year we still owe $100 so this is your accrual now these three figures add up together don't you think that they are the uh, is actually uh, whatever that you have uh, are supposed to spend for insurance this year so that's why when you add these three up you get a thousand two a thousand two is what we have incurred for this year and it will go to our profit and loss account at 31st March 2010 now for this chapter you really need to know your prepayments and accruals chapters uh, chapter really well the last kind of account that we want to analyze is the income account okay this is to determine the income for the year so this is an example when receive account with as with all income account to debit is to minus to credit is to plus so let's take a look at this balance brought down $100 on the debit side. So what does this represent? Now this is actually the accrued rent received from last year. That means to say that last year some people are still owing me the rent, rental income uh, monies. All right. Now, and then this year I collected 6460 out of which I believe some of it would be for last year okay last year that uh, some people are still owing me so this amount would include some from here all right and at the end of the year i realized that i have collected more than i should all right for this year so 160 dollars is your prepaid revenue okay prepaid revenue and hence uh, this is a prepayment all right so what is the amount that you have earned for this year it's 6200 so you take this and subtract 100 and 160 to get 6002 and this is the figure that i want all right the profit and loss figure because i am going to record this in my profit and loss account under revenue or income so again i would want to tell you that you again need to know your prepayments and accruals really well so taking all the pieces and putting them together, your expenses, your income, and so on and so forth, putting them together, you'll be able to determine your net profit through the preparation of your trading profit and loss account. You can also prepare your balance sheet if assets and liabilities are given as well. And this helps you to ascertain your financial position of the business. There are actually many different kinds of questions around using this method. In this lesson, I will just show you two. Sample question type 1. This is the question. Jennifer, a sole trader, does not record her business transactions in accordance with the double entry system. However, she was able to supply the following information. Creditors, 
start and end debtor start and end okay and bank start and then there is uh, a question mark at the end for you to find anyway by the way uh, 20th June 2006 would mean 1st July 2006 so that's the start of the year all right so these are the transactions that happen during the year but let's focus on the question first uh, we want to prepare the bank account for the year ended as well as to find out the total purchases and total sales for the year now you realize that in this question you are not even asked to prepare your trading profit and loss account to find your uh, net profit as well as your balance sheet now this is uh, actually a, a preliminary question all right so uh, typically most questions uh, would need you to find your net profit which is via your trading profit and loss account as well as your balance sheet all right so this is a prelude okay now let's uh, focus on this account called bank okay the very first uh, item that we want to analyze all right uh, since that is the required question part a as well so let's uh, focus on uh, uh, part one it says cash sales banked amount to six thousand dollars so now the purpose is really to pick out all the information to do with bank so for this one you will realize that it's money coming in all right because uh, you made a sale money is coming in all right so cat uh, number two checks received from that this fifty thousand after allowing a cash discount of two hundred dollars again money is collected from the debtors so money is coming in now payments to creditors amounted to fifty five thousand dollars after deducting discount uh, received of two six nine zero so in this case this one is payment to creditors so money is going out now goods bought by check four thousand okay so when you pay for goods your money is going out all right now if you look at point five it says faulty goods returned to uh, suppliers amounted to 1570 those returned by customers amounted to 730 now this particular point has no effect on bank because there is no money in or money out all right uh, likewise for point six there's a debt of 2400 owing by customers and it was written off as bad no effect on bank all right so let's look at point seven operating expenses paid by check amounted to five thousand dollars so that would mean that i have paid okay uh operating expenses so money is going up so if you look at this if i want to prepare a bank account it should look like this okay so you start off with 20k that's the start of the year and then all the money that's coming in then minus all the money that is going out and this is your balance carried down bring it forward to next year okay now we want to focus on the creditor control account because we want to determine the credit purchases for the year so here we look at the creditor control account to credit is to plus that means we owe more creditors and to debit is to minus, so we owe less to the creditors. So I've started by putting in the balances at the start and at the end. So the start balance is here, and then the end balance is over here. Now, um, if you look at point number one, it has nothing to do with creditors. Point number two as well. Let's take a look at point number three. Payment to creditors amounted to $55,000 after deducting discounts received by 2690. So this basically means that I am going to owe my creditor less. Why? Because I have already paid $55,000, so I owe them less. And if they are going to give me discounts of 2690, then again, I would owe them less. Now, if you look at point number four, goods bought by check $4,000. Now, this one is clearly... Uh, to do with bank that means i have already bought from yes i have bought some goods but i have cleared the payment so there is no owing whatsoever so it doesn't affect my creditor control account now if you look at point five faulty goods returned to suppliers amounted to one five seven zero this one has got something to do with the creditor's account because this is what we know what we know as uh, returns outwards or alternatively we call it purchases returns so when there is a purchase purchases returns we are going to owe our creditors less okay now point number six debts of 2400 owing by customers were written off as bad nothing to do with creditors 
Operating expenses also nothing to do with creditors. So I'm going to show you the answer. So earlier highlighted in blue already I explained. Now in black is what I have just gone through. So we uh, owe the creditors less by all these uh, figures. Okay, because uh, I have already paid them. They give me discounts and I have returned some goods to them. Now work backwards. Okay, so put these, add them up and then after that you minus the start. You will get this red figure thing. Okay, so it's 61500. And what could that be other than the fact that I have bought some goods on credit from the creditors. So this is the missing piece in this account, okay, in this red one. So this is what you really want to find, credit purchases. So now that we have determined the credit purchases of 61500 we want to come back to the question it says i want to find total purchases and we recall total purchases is cash purchases plus credit purchases now can you find where exactly is the cash purchases it is here right point four goods bought by check four thousand dollars so this is your four thousand dollars cash purchases plus your sixty one thousand five hundred credit purchases Okay, so from here, 61,500 and plus 4,000, so that will give us $65,500 as total purchases going towards the trading account. The next part we want to look for is the total sales, alright? So, uh, before we find total sales, we want to look at our credit sales, okay? That's why we open up our debtor's control account. Okay, so we want to take a look at our debtor's control account. So to debit is to plus, which means debtors owe me more. To credit is to minus, so debtors owe me less. We put in the figures 31350 and 33430. All right, so now let's take a look at the transactions in greater detail. Now let's look at point one. It says cash sales banked amounted to $6,000. Now in this case, I have made a sales uh, of $6,000, but I've collected all the money, all right? So there is no owing uh, at this point. Now let's look at point two. So checks received from debtors $50,000 after allowing a cash discount of $200. Now in this case, yes, it's got something to do with debtors because debtors pay me, so debtors owe me less. If I were to give them a discount, then I they would owe me less by that amount as well. So this point two basically means lesser debtors. Now point three, nothing to do with debtors. Point four as well. Point five, okay, those returned by customers amounted to seven hundred and thirty dollars. Now in this case, uh, this is your sales returns, or otherwise known as your returns inwards. Now when debtors return you goods, they obviously owe you lesser. So they owe you less. So this is how it looks. Now, point number six, debts of 2,400 owing by customers were written off as bad. So, in this case, bad debts. Now, bad debts will lower your debtors as well. So, less debtors because they can't pay you anymore. So, they're going to owe you less. Alright? Now, seven, operating expenses paid by checks, nothing to do with debtors. So, with this, we will be able to prepare our debtors control account. So, we, just now, whatever I spoke uh. The transactions they are all in black so that just pay me they owe me less by fifty thousand dollars i give them discount so they owe me less by 200 um they return some goods so they owe me less by 730 um some of them can't pay me anymore so they owe me less by 2400 put them all together and then you subtract the start balance then you will get this red part very similar to credit purchases, we get the credit sales. Okay, this red part here because um, if you work backwards, I must have sold them something on credit. So, credit sales is what we derive from here. Alright, and then of course, we don't want to, uh, we also want to remember that at the end of the day, we want to look for total sales. And total sales is really what we take 
credit sales plus cash sales. And if you recall, point number one is your cash sales of $6,000. Add that together with this red figure, 55410, your credit sales. Together, you will get 61410. And this is ready to go to your trading account if you need to prepare one. I've already finished looking at sample question type 1. Now, we're going to look at the more complete questions. Okay, so uh, this is a type 2 question. All right. Uh, the following balance, the following is the balance sheet of John, okay, as at 31st March 2009. So, you will realize that this is um, your assets and liabilities at this date, 31st March 2009. Now, we are actually currently at 31st March 2010, so which means that this 31st March 2009, we are supposed to read it as 1st April 2009, the start of the year. So, these are all your starting assets and liabilities. Then it says here that John did not keep proper records but was able to provide the following. You have receipts and payments here. So if you have receipts and payments, this should remind you that this is actually the bank account. Okay, I repeat. If you have receipts and payments here, it should remind you that this is the bank account where money is coming in and money is going out. Then point two says that balances on 31st March were this. So this is really partial uh, part of your uh, balance sheet as of at the end of the year. Okay, John wrote off bad debts during the year $200 and then he decides to have the same rate of doubtful debts as last year. So this is really your uh, profit and loss item as well as your balance sheet. Now a little bit of prepayments and accruals here. You have annual insurance of $1,200. So later on you will have to prepare your insurance account. And then you have your balance uh, depreciation at 10% for all fixed assets. So this is your profit and loss figure as well as your uh, balance sheet. Okay, provision for doubtful, uh, provision for depreciation. So what are you supposed to prepare here? Your trading profit and loss account for the year 31st March 2010 as well as the balance sheet at the same date. And we will take a look at the answers in the next slide. All right, so we start by looking at our bank account. So you see here that uh, we have our receipts as well as our payments. So this one is, I already told you, this is the bank account. So we will just take receipts minus payments to find the ending bank figure. Next, we want to use our debtor's control account to find credit sales. Then we want to use our creditor's control account to find credit purchases. Then we want to use a rent account, okay, to find our rent uh, for the year and likewise we want to use the loan interest account to find out our loan interest for the year okay so we're gonna start by taking uh, a look at the uh, debtor control account so but before that okay we're gonna pick up all the information uh, that has got to do with debtor. so it's really picking out uh, details that you need Okay, from everywhere because the information is scattered everywhere. So you start by taking the debtor starting balance, the debtor ending balance, 6,600. And then after that, you will uh, take the money that debtor has paid you. So this is it. Debtor paid you 75480, so which means they owe you lesser. And then you also have this other information here that says, uh, bad debts of $200. So I want to record the bad debts and it would uh, reduce my uh, debtors as well. So let's take a look at the debtors account. So it will look like this. Starting balance 7,000, ending balance 6,600. 75,480 is what the debtors paid you, so they owe you less. 200 is what, they, uh, is what some debtors can't pay you anymore, so you get them to owe you less. Same thing around work the other uh, work um the other uh, work the other way around and then we will take this minus this, okay work backwards to find the credit sales that is highlighted here seven five two eight zero so this is credit sales, so add that to any cash sales that might be and that will give me my total sales. Now next we want to look at the creditors control account, so we want to start by looking at the. Starting balance of the creditors, 5,600. Ending balance of the creditor, that's 5,200. And then we want to see what exactly did you pay to your creditors, 48,400. So we quickly scan through. We don't see any other information to do with creditors anymore. So that means that we are ready to prepare our creditors account. 
starting balance 5006 ending balance 5002 and then we have uh, what we paid the creditors 48400 work backwards you'll be able to get credit purchases of $48,000 now i repeat this is $48,000 of credit purchases so add that to any cash purchases there might be and that will give me total purchases now next up, we want to take a look at the insurance account. But before that, can we just uh, take a look at the information that is given, okay? So we have the starting balance, 250 prepaid insurance. And then at the end of the year, uh, we, we don't seem to have an ending figure here. So it seems like we need to derive it, okay? Uh, we have an insurance figure here which uh, shows that I have paid because it's payment of... 850 and if we look down there's another information here that says annual insurance of 1002 now this annual insurance you must know that this is actually a profit and loss figure this is the figure that says what you are supposed to incur for insurance that year so this is your p and l figure already so you should be able to work backwards to get your um ending balance for insurance let's have a look so we start off with a prepaid insurance of 250 and then after that you pay 850 so you have uh, more insurance the debit is to plus and we don't have this yellow figure so we work back uh, we, we but we have this 1200 so we will take this 1200 this is your profit and loss figure and then we minus this two we were able to get 100 dollars this actually shows a crude insurance okay i repeat uh, this shows accrued insurance okay so next we want to talk about rent account okay so but before that again we want to take a look at the information given now if you look at a rent account you have a hundred dollars uh, rent that is accrued since last year and then if you look at uh, the payment for rent is six thousand four hundred and sixty so you paid six thousand four hundred and sixty rent this year Okay, and then at the end of the year, you actually have a balance, a prepaid rent, that means you paid extra, of $160. And that's the information that you have about rent. So let's take a look at the rent account. So you have your starting balance of uh, $100, all right? And then you, this is accrual, so it's on the minus side. And then this is on the plus side, I actually paid for rent, so I have more rent uh, incurred this year. And you realize that you actually paid more uh, for rent for this year. You paid until for next year. So you have a prepayment here of 160 Hence, you bring down and the prepayment is reflected here. So you work backwards again. You will be able to get this yellow figure here, 6200 This is actually what you have incurred for rent for this year, 2010, March 31st. All right. So I hope this is clear and we're going to move on to the trading account and uh, profit and loss account as well as your balance sheet in the next uh, slide. Before we prepare the trading account as well as the profit and loss account, let's examine a few uh, items in detail. Okay, so you rem just now you already looked for the credit sales. So now we want to find out where exactly is the cash sales. So... Um, I've already shown you, this is where cash sales is. And then of course, uh, take cash sales plus your credit sales, you get total sales. That is the figure that will go to trading account. Next, we want to look for, uh, is there any cash purchases? Okay, so i like to point out to you that cash purchases is right here, 12,600. Alright, so that's another figure. Uh, that you will add, okay, cash purchases, add with credit purchases to give you total purchases and that will go to your trading account. Okay, next, uh, I want to highlight this to you. John wrote off bad debts during the year $200. Please do not subtract it from the 6600 Why? Because this is already an extracted balance from 31st March 2010. And it says here it's during the year it was already uh, written off. So, this figure would have already reflected this $200. So, this $200 was just for the sole purpose of putting it into the debtor control account to get your credit sales. I hope this is clear. 
Now the next part says he decided to continue with the same rate of doubtful debt provision as last year. Some people may be stumped with this, but let's take a look. What was last year's uh, depreciation rate? Okay, so this is 350, this is 7,000. So you would be able to tell that the rate of provision for doubtful debts is 5%. So 350 divided by 7,000 uh, times a 100 uh, percent, you'll be able to get 5%. All right. And last but not least, uh, take a look at this. Loan interest of uh, 1000, uh, sorry, 120 is accrued, is owing. So very simply, just add that to interest on loan of 130. So you only paid 130 and you didn't pay enough. So just take 130 plus 120. You get 250 because there isn't a starting balance. All right. So let's look at the trading account now. So this is your trading account and you would see that I have uh, this is your cash purchases and credit purchases cash sales and credit sales okay and all these are figures that you can find from the uh, question itself opening stock closing stock and then you'll be able to derive your gross profit bring down the gross profit get your doubtful debts uh, this is apparently a decrease in doubtful debts so I hope you know how to calculate this and then you put in all your other information here, okay? And remember, only profit and loss figures will come here, okay? That means what you have incurred for the year, all right? So you have your depreciation as well, 10% for all your assets, all right? And earlier, I mentioned about the interest on loan, okay? Rent, insurance, we have mentioned earlier, all right? And bad debts, okay? And this will be your net profit that you want to that you will want to uh, bring forth to your uh, balance sheet. All right. So let's take a look at the balance sheet. So before we and uh, we go to the balance sheet, let's analyze a few things. All right. So you will see that there's a motor van there, twenty k. This is a a new purchase. All right. So I bought uh, some a uh, motor van and I paid via bank. Okay, via check. And then there's also a repayment of loan which I've paid for. Okay, so 1,000. So that should decrease the loan size to 4K. So 5,000 minus 1,000 should give you 4,000. Alright. Uh, next one is your drawings. Okay, so personal expenses should be read as drawings. Next is your capital. You have an additional capital of 10,000. So you really have to find information from everywhere to put into place okay now let's take a look at your balance sheet so for the balance sheet you will see that this is the original fixed assets and then you provided 10 percent depreciation this is the new motor van that you bought and you provided 10 percent depreciation and then this stock figure you can get it on the quest uh, from the question then you have your debtors figure which i told you just take from the ending balance less five percent uh, which we have derived from uh, the previous year. Then prepaid rent, uh, this is your prepayment that we have already ascertained. Uh, and this is actually from the question. Uh, let's take a look at the loan size. It has reduced to 4K, like I mentioned earlier. You minus 1K of loan repayment. Creditors, you can take it from the question at the end of the year. Uh, accrued expenses as well. And then bank overdraft is a derived figure when you did your uh, receipts minus payments so apparently payments is more so that's why you have a bank overdraft now let's take a look at the owner's equity section so you have originally capital of 50k take your assets minus liabilities and then after that you have your net profit which you did uh, from the previous part then i mentioned also that you have additional capital as well as drawings and then you get this figure so you should be able to balance your balance sheet now it is actually quite tedious uh, but you have uh, come to the end of this uh, very long question, type 2 question. So I hope that you have already uh, pretty much understood what a, a typical question would ask for. Alright, so like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of pieces that you got to put together and the pieces are scattered everywhere. So it's really uh, up, uh, up to you right now to be able to read the question well, to be able to sieve out information, to put them in the right place, to fix that particular jigsaw. So we've come to the end of the lesson. Thank you very much.